Good day, grade 10 students. Another day, another lesson for Mathematics 10. I'm your teacher, Darwin. And for today's lesson, I'll be discussing about the midpoint and the distance formula. Okay, before we proceed with a proper lesson, let's have first the objectives for today. So first, you need to develop and apply the formula for midpoint. Next, we have to use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points. Okay, so let's start by the keywords or vocabulary on this lesson. So the first one is coordinate, second coordinate plane for the first one. Next, midpoint, midpoint formula, distance formula, leg, and then the hypotenuse. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is the coordinate plane. Okay, actually, in the rectangular coordinate system or the Cartesian coordinate system, the coordinate plane, the figure or the illustration for that is this, actually, that has four regions on this illustration. So, a coordinate plane is a plane that is divided into four regions by a horizontal line, which is the x-axis, and a vertical line, which is the y-axis. The, the location or coordinates of our points are given by an ordered pair in the form of x and then y. This is the ordered pair. Okay, so that's for our coordinate plane. This Cartesian coordinate system is actually developed by the uh, famous mathematician, mathematician René Descartes. Okay, so let's proceed with the midpoint. A midpoint is a point that bisects or divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, so if we have M as our midpoint and then the line segment is AB, so in this part, if M is the midpoint and then AB is the line segment, if we have a midpoint M that is surely bisect the line segment AB into two congruent parts, which is AM and then MB. So if we are given a measurement of 6 for our line segment AB, then the measurement for each line segment bisect by a midpoint is actually equal to each other. So for the line segment AM that is equal to 3, then also MB is equal to 3. Okay, so that's for the midpoint. Let's proceed with the midpoint formula. Okay, so in this illustration, we have point A and then point B, or line segment AB. And in the middle, we call this as our midpoint. Actually, we have a formula for finding the midpoint of two given points in the Cartesian plane or coordinate plane. So the midpoint M of AB with an endpoints of A, X sub 1, Y sub 1, and then B, X sub 2, Y sub 2. And then we have the formula here as derived into this illustration. We have the midpoint quantity X sub 1 plus X sub 2 over 2, and then Y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2 for our y coordinate. Okay, take note for this part. Just remember, you can label the given and uh, coordinate point given to you as x sub 1, y sub 1, and then x sub 2, y sub 2. Even if you interchange, where did you, uh, where did you put the x sub 1 and then y sub 1? That doesn't matter because if you add those two, the answer will be the same. Even if you rearrange where point or uh, where is the point for x sub one and then y sub one and then for x sub two and then y sub two, so for better understanding, let's have some example for the use of midpoint formula. Okay, example one: find the coordinate of the midpoint of the line segment AB with endpoints of A as negative a three 
and then b as negative 2, 7. Okay, in this part, I will be labeling point A as my x sub 1, y sub 1, and then b as x sub 2, y sub 2. Again, just what I said a while ago, you can interchange point A as x sub 2, y sub 2, and then point B as x sub 1, y sub 1, because the answer will, be al will also be the same. Okay, so next we have the solution. Again, the formula for midpoint. And then for the solution, negative 8 as x sub 1 and then negative 2 as x sub 2. So if we, I add that, we have negative 8 plus negative 2 over 2. And for the y coordinate, 3 as y sub 1 and then 7 as y sub 2. So we have 3 plus 7 over 2. Simplifying that, we will have negative 10 over 2 and 10 over 2. And the answer for the midpoint of the given two endpoints, we have negative 5 and 5 as the midpoint of point A and then point B. Okay, so in the illustration is here to show you this is negative 8 and uh, 3 and then negative 2 and 7. So by solving the midpoint, negative 5 and 5 is actually here okay, in this part. So that is for our midpoint. Next, another one. Find the coordinate of the midpoint of line segment CD with endpoints C as 5, 6 and D as 1 and 8. Okay, so again, by using the midpoint formula, M, the quantity of x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2, and then y plus y sub 2 over, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. Okay, so in the solution, we have here 5 and then 1, 5 as x sub 1, and then y as x sub 2. 6 as y sub 1 and then 8 as y sub 2. Okay, so for the x coordinate, we need to add 5 and then 1, 5 plus 1 over 2. And then for the y coordinate, 6 plus 8 over 2. Simplifying that, we will have 6 over 2 and then 14 over 2. And our midpoint is actually 3 and then 7. So that's for the midpoint formula or by getting the midpoint of the given endpoints in a line segment. Okay, so again, the midpoint for this part is 3, 7. Okay, next, let's proceed with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so in this Pythagorean theorem, this is actually used to derive the formula for the distance formula. Okay, so in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the lengths of the legs of a given right triangle. So the area of the largest square is C times C. Okay, so in this illustration, you, we, you can see that the C squared part is actually the hypotenuse, the largest among those three squared. Okay, so... So we have here C squared as for the hypotenuse part, and then A and then B as the two legs. So the areas of the smaller square are A squared and then B squared. Okay, so for the Pythagorean theorem, we have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And you can also interchange that position just like this, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Again, this is another illustration for Pythagorean theorem. We have the longest side, which is c, as the hypotenuse, and then followed by two legs of the given right triangle. Okay, so deriving the distance formula. What is the distance between two general points with coordinate A, x sub 1, y sub 1, and then B, x sub 2, y sub 2? 
Okay, so in this part, for the horizontal distance between the points, we have x sub 2 and then x sub 2 minus x sub 1. For the vertical distance between the points, we have y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Applying the Pythagorean theorem, we'll have here the quantity of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Okay, so in this part, if we need to remove the squared symbol or exponent on the hypotenuse part, we just need to square out both sides to cancel the squared. Okay, but in this part, we are left with AB is equal, our line segment AB as the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the quantity of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared as our distance formula. Okay, to use that, let's have some example. Okay, so example number 1, find the distance between the points A as 7, 6 and then B as 3 and negative 2. Okay, again, using the distance formula, we have here, first we need to label which is going to be x sub 1 and then y sub 1 and then x sub 2, y sub 2. On this part, point A as x sub 1, y sub 1 and then point B as x sub 2, y sub 2. So, in this solution, we have to substitute the values of x sub 2, x sub 1 and then y sub 2, y sub 1. 3 as x sub 2 and then minus 7 as our x sub 1. And then that is squared plus negative 2 as y sub 2 and then 6 as y sub 1. So we have negative 2 minus 6 is squared. Okay, so simplifying that, we will have negative 4 is squared and then negative 8 is squared. That is equal to 16 plus 64. And then 16 plus 64 Again, uh, just remember that it has also the square symbol in this part. So, in this final part, we have the square root of 16 plus 64, which is 80. And then, if we get the square root of 80, you will have 8.94 units to the nearest hundred. We, uh, before you finalize your answer, ask your teacher if you uh, ask the teacher for the rule in the uh, in rounding off a given decimal number okay so in this part uh, you need to we need to round it off into the nearest hundred okay so the answer here is 8.94 okay so the distance between point a and then point b here is equal to 8.94 units okay so for you to better understand the lesson for distance formula Let's have another one example. Another example. Use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance of the nearest tenth into the nearest tenth. Okay, so from our nearest tenth or hundred, based on the rule set by your teacher. Okay, so from point B as 3 and 4 and then 2 point negative uh, e as negative 2 negative 5 okay so on this part our distance formula is actually here okay so substitute the value point d as x sub 1 y sub 1 and then point e as x sub 2 y sub 2 so writing that on the formula sub or substituting that to the formula negative 2 as x sub 2 and then 3 as x sub 1. So, the quantity of negative 2 minus 3 squared. Don't forget the squared symbol plus the quantity of negative 5 as x, uh, y sub 2 and then 4 as y sub 1 and then squared. Okay, on this part, again, remember that we have the squared symbol until here, until the last part. So, we have to simplify that. So, negative 2 and negative 3 is negative 5 squared. And then negative 5 and minus 4 is actually negative 9 squared. 
Simplifying that, we have 25 plus 81. So we need to get the square root of the sum of 25 and 81, which is 106. So we need to solve for the square root of 106. And that's uh, and the square root of that is actually 10.3 or 10.30. On this part, we need to uh, follow which uh, the question on this part is 10. For the answer is 10 nearest 10, so it can be 10.3 or 400. We need to set that as 10.30, depending on the rule set by your teacher. So 10.30. 30 or 10.3 is the final answer for the distance of point D to point E. Okay, so that's it for the midpoint and then distance formula. Thank you for watching. Good day, everyone.